Let's talk switches. Or more specifically, let's talk about switches that you may find in your RV. Whether you're a do-it-yourselfer and like to do projects in your RV, or if you're just trying to maintain your RV, you're going to come across times when you need to know about switches. And that's what this video is about. In an RV, you're likely to encounter two types of switches. Either a toggle switch, like I show here, or a rocker switch, like I show here. And for the most part, they have the same characteristics. The main differences are the actuator, the mounting, and the terminals. The actuator on the rocker, of course, is a rocker. And the toggle switch, as the name suggests, is a toggle. Most toggle switches mount by a center shaft, which goes into either a 1 quarter or 1 eighth inch hole, while most rocker switches snap into a square cutout. Rocker switches are almost always found with tabs that connect to terminals where a toggle switch can either have this type of tab or a screw tab or a solder tab. So the remainder of the discussion is about rocker switches and with the differences I just mentioned all this information pertains to toggle switches as well. There are generally three criteria in selecting the switch. These are the switch action, the mechanical characteristics, and the electrical characteristics. Switches are generally categorized by throws and poles. A throw defines an action such as on-off or a three-way type switch. A pole defines a switch assembly. One or more identical switch assemblies can be manufactured into a single housing and the pole designates how many of these assemblies are in a switch. And there are three types of switches you may find in an RV. The most simple switch is known as a single pole, single throw, or SPST. And as you can see in the drawing, it is simply an on-off switch. It is called a single throw because only one action exists, that is, on and off. It is known as a single pole switch because only one switch mechanism exists within the switch housing. A single pole, single throw switch is the most common switch you will find in your RV. And we have an example of an SPST switch. And you see there's two leads. And this is just simply on off. And here is an example of one and it just simply turns the circuit on or off. The load could be a light bulb or anything similar. However, if we add a second action to the switch, we can create something called a double throw. In a double throw switch, you have two circuits that are tied together with a common. So in one position, one circuit is connected. When flipped into the other position, that circuit becomes disconnected and a new circuit becomes connected. In this case, you have on, off, and on again. There's three terminals. The center terminal is common and if you flip the switch one way it makes a connection to this terminal. If you flip it the other way it'll make a connection to this terminal. And in an example of this may be for a refrigerator. If you flip to one side it runs on DC. If flipped to the other side the switch could power a relay which in turn would turn on the AC circuit of the refrigerator. And in the center, neither load is turned on, so the refrigerator would be off. And again, since there's only one physical switch within the housing, this is a single pole, double throw switch. Sometimes they're called three-way switches, but in this case it does not apply because you have on, off, and on again. Or a true three-way switch, like this one, is going to be on, on. This does not have a center off, this has a center off. One distinction that must be made is that three-way switches are single pole double throw switches, but not all double pole double throw switches are three-way switches. The difference being whether or not the switch has a center off. A three-way switch is commonly used in pairs shown here where a light or in the case of an RV a water pump as well may be switched on or off by one of two switches from different locations. If both switches are in the same position, the device is on. If the switches are in opposite positions, the device is off. 
You should see here where a switch without a center off is desirable because if you had a center off switch then one switch could turn the circuit off and the other switch could not turn it on. Unfortunately calling both type switches single pole double throw does not tell you if you have a three way switch or not but there's a way to tell and we'll get into that later. If we place two switch assemblies within the housing we now have a double pole switch. And since it's a on off on switch or a double throw switch, this is known as a double pole double throw. What we really end up with are two double throw switches that are independent, switch their own circuits, but are switched at the same time because they're both connected to the actuator. This is typically designated in a schematic with a dotted line between the two double throw switches as we see here. A common use for a double pole double throw switch would be to control a motor, say on a slide out or an awning motor. This best works with a center off switch and also with a momentary switch. That is when you let go of the switch, the switch snaps back to the off position. So in this switch, when you flip the switch one direction, positive and negative go to the motor. But when you flip the switch in the other direction, positive and negative go to the opposite terminals in the motor which of course will reverse the direction of travel. And there is a custom switch such as this one. This is a motor control double pole double throw switch. And if you look at the terminals, they look different than this one. This is double pole double throw, this is double pole double throw. However, with this one, the motor reversing is already wired. We now know that we can have switches including single pole, single throw, double pole, double throw in any combination. We also know that we can have center off or no off and also a momentary switch. Fortunately a terminology shortcut does exist that manufacturers typically use that help us designate what those are. This terminology only cares about throws. It does not care how many poles a switch has. A single throw switch would be written on dash off designating this action. A double throw switch that would be used for a three way switch would be designated on dash on or on dash none dash on. A double throw switch with a center off would be on dash off dash on. A momentary switch would use parentheses or the word MOM in the direction of the throw. Switches can also come with indicator lights on one or multiple positions. They can be incandescent or LED in nature and with the LED versions they may or may not have the current limiting resistor. There is too many varieties for me to discuss here and the best bet is to look at the manufacturer's documentation for the configuration of the switch. There are four different sizes of switches that you'll typically find in an RV. These are typically called miniature or sometimes D-miniature. These are usually miniature. Of course these are standard and sometimes these are called Carling. And the reason is the original manufacturer for these is a company called Carling. And again the manufacturer's documentation will show the cutout dimensions. That is the most important part about buying the correct size switch. And by the way, this terminology is not absolute because each manufacturer has their own way of describing things. If the switch is to be used on the exterior of the RV, its waterproofness is important. Switches typically use the IEC standard 60529, which is also adopted by NEMA in the U.S. The standard provides an index showing the waterproofness of the component. You may have seen this index previously as it is known as the ingress protection or IP code. For example, IPX8 would designate a device that is waterproof down to 3 meters. Again, consult the manufacturer's documentation of the switch for this data. Here is where many RVers get it wrong. Did you realize that most switches have a different DC rating as they do their AC rating? and in most cases the DC rating is lower. For example, in the data sheet for this switch, it can handle up to 13 amps at 125 volts AC, but only five amps DC. So what's going on? The rating has to do with the ability of the switch to make and break contact. When a switch opens and closes, an arc occurs. This arc, if too powerful, can destroy the switch. 
While the contacts are usually made to withstand this arc somewhat, the switch has a definite lifespan, and the more current through the switch, the more arcing occurs. But why does the switch have a lower amp rating at 12 volts DC than it does at 120 volts AC? That just doesn't seem to make any sense. In AC power, the voltage and current will be at zero 120 times a second due to the 60 Hz power line frequency. The passing through zero volts actually aids in lowering both the arcing potential and duration. In contrast, in a DC power line, the current is constant so it does not aid in this arc suppression. In other words, the voltage is removed 120 times a second in AC, which helps the switch open and close. In DC, the current is constant, so that arc will never go away until the switch contacts go far enough apart that the arcing no longer occurs. Anybody that has ever arc welded with a DC arc welder knows how much more efficient the arc is on DC than on AC. Not all manufacturers mark the voltage ratings on their switches. Do not assume that if the switch only has an AC rating that the DC rating is the same. When the DC rating is not known, always consult the manufacturer's documentation.